I'd like to talk to you on what I talk to you and the Holy Spirit. You and the Holy Spirit. 20 truths about you and the Holy Spirit. Today I will be talking about four. And then this is part one. You and the Holy Spirit. 20 truths about you and the Holy Spirit. Our test. Job 33, 4. The Spirit of God has made me and the breath and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. The Spirit of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. The New Living Translation of Job 33. For the Spirit of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. The New Living Translation. For the Spirit of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Man became a living soul through the breath of the Holy Spirit. Through the breath of the Holy Spirit. And in John 6, 63, Jesus says, says it is the Spirit who gives life the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So you can connect the spirit of God to the word and the word to the spirit. The Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Lord is that spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 20 truths. Number one, the Holy Spirit created you. The truth you must know. You are not your own. You are a product of the Holy Spirit. You didn't create yourself. He created you. He is your life giver. The Holy Spirit created you. Job 33 verse 4. The Spirit of God has made me. The Spirit of God made me. And the breath of the Almighty gives me life. The good news translation of that says, God's Spirit made me and gave me life. So who made you? God's Spirit. And do you know, in John 4, 23, 24, God is a spirit. So those that worship God must worship him where? In spirit and in truth. What is the spirit? The Holy Spirit. What is the truth? The word of God. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in word, through Jesus. And the spirit, that's the Holy Spirit. So, you were created by the Spirit of God. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 6. Who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant? Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the Spirit giveth life. The life that you have is given to you by the Spirit of God. The life that you have is sustained by the Spirit of God. The life that you have has to be driven by the Spirit of God if you allow him. No man that is driven by the Spirit of God that is ever stranded. The Holy Spirit enforces the Word of God so that the Word of God comes to pass in your life. And I see it coming to pass in your life in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit dwells in us 
dwells in us. You can do nothing. You cannot do so much without the Holy Spirit. You just need him. And you need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Number two truths that you should know. He owns you. He created you and he owns you. If you bought a car, who owns the car? The buyer. So he created us for his own reason, which we will see. And he says in his word, he is our owner. When the man in the scripture in the New Testament, Matthew, in boasted and said he is who he is by his own power that night, he was visited. I said, no, you don't own yourself. Somebody owned you. I listened to what someone said, that there was a man who dared God and said to God that uh, what you can do, I can do, science can do. So there's no big deal about you. I said, okay, let's have a contest. Let the contest, let's create man. And he said, yes, science can create man. Fantastic. And then God, according to the story, God said, okay, let's make man from dirt, from dust of the ground. And he said, no, we, it is very easy. We can do it. What you can do, you can do. It's okay. Go ahead and start off. And then he went on and packed sand, brought them together. And God said, not so fast. Create your own dirt. Manufacture your own not my own. If you can do what I can do, you create your own. And the game was over. Nobody can beat his chest and say, I'm who I am by myself. No, you are created by someone and the one who created you owns you. You are accountable to your owner. Let's look at the scripture. First Corinthians chapter 6. God bless our bishop for asking us to have grace to pray in the spirit. 6, 19 to 20. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? 20. For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. You were bought. First Corinthians 3 verse 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? So, he created us. He owns us. Where is his dwelling place? In us. He said, I own you. Let me lead you and you will not be stranded. Number three truths. Very quickly. He intercedes for us. He intercedes for us. Romans chapter 8, 26 to 27. Romans chapter 8, 26 to 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. He knows our limitations, so he helps us. Because he dwells in us. We are his own. Our failure is his failure. If he's our driver, whatever goes wrong, he takes responsibility. But he, nothing goes wrong with him. Holy Spirit can never be stranded, can never go wrong. When darkness was upon the face of the deep, in Genesis 1, the Holy Spirit showed up. Jesus was in the grave on the third day, according to the word of God. Jesus, the Holy Spirit showed up, raised him up from the grave. Nothing, nothing can be stranded with him. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. According to the will of God. He makes intercession. And we know that all things work together. Verse 28. All things work together for good when the Spirit is involved. It is important to know that. When the Spirit of God is involved and is the director, 
All things work together for good. But if he's not involved, you cannot. So when things are contrary, it will turn out for good. When things are positive, it will turn out for good. Because the Holy Spirit is what? The driver. He's involved. The one that neither sleeps nor slumber. Oh, look at the arrangement of man. Look at the arrangement of women. Look at the beauty of women. Look at the beauty of man. It is the architect, the architect of it is the Holy Spirit. Oh my God, he designed man. It was his design that our two eyes be forward. It was his design that our hands be this way. It was his design that we should look the way we look. He is our designer, the master architect. And the Bible declares that very clearly in Psalm 139. Look at what he said. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. <laughs> how, how is man? Mysteriously what? Complex. You breathe in, you breathe out. Breathe in, everybody. Breathe in, you breathe out. He made that. He created his air for us to breathe in free of charge. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you know me, Lord. You even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place. Carefully, skillfully, you shaped me from nothing to what? To something. I'll read that again. You formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place. That's what the scientists didn't know. That God created me. It was in the secret place. The, the secret is not known to any man. The breath of life is only the Holy Spirit can give it. Regardless of the robots or whatever. God, it was in the secret place. And the secret things of the Lord belongs to him. <laughs> Somebody was saying, you know what the time he said, oh yes, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places, true. As he is, so am I in this world, true. What he knows, I know, true. Is that, is that not scripture? What he knows, I know. And I say, but pause. There are things he knows that you don't know. Ah, no. I say, he, so am I. I say, I'm absolutely correct. We are seated with him in heavenly places. No. But he knows what you don't know. I say, he, so, I say, you just be calm. He knows what you don't know. Okay. Number one. Tell me when you are leaving this earth. He was stranded. <laughs> he know there is a secret of God that belongs to God. Look at what happened here. Look at it. Jeremiah, look at look at that. You have your Bible there. He said, You formed every bone in my body when you created me in where? In the secret chamber. In the secret chamber. Nobody else has it. Secret chamber. You created me. Fearfully and wonderfully what? Made. And then now. He said you, 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 you carefully, skillfully, you shaped me from nothing to something. Verse 16. You saw who you created me to be before I became me. You saw... Who you created me to be before I became me. So God created, saw you before. No wonder Adam looked at the woman and said, oh my God, beautiful. Look at the woman, beautiful. My God. Every woman is attracted to man because the man is handsome and beautiful. And every man is attracted to the woman because the woman is handsome and what? <laughs> Don't write that in English, but that, that's it. No, no, no. Why did they say the man is handsome and the woman is beautiful? Come, uh, you are the one publisher of many things. Why, why is man handsome and the 
and the woman beautiful. Is it to distinguish both of them or what? Praise the Lord. Uh, that would also mean asking a question, why we use her for woman and use uh, him for man. for man. They are uniquely different. They are made in their own unique ways. Absolutely. And they have uh, different uh, dis descriptive words for each uh, sex. Yes. And that's the way it is. Fantastic. Yeah. I appreciate that. But when you say beautiful, it looks more colorful than when you say handsome. Well, <laughs> because when you say so beautiful, you know the beauty, the beauty of it, the beauty. Everybody trying to gravitate towards beauty. But when it comes to man, say just handsome, he handsome. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is perfect. He made man to provide. <laughs> And what you do, you do with your hand. And so when you are handsome, oh my God! <laughs> oh I, ben, like eh? I like that. So man is handsome. Man, man is always walking your hand. All the men just just wait behind you. Ederiku, better <laughs> put something in their hands, though. Put something in the man's hand. Did you hear what the senior book said? Because if a man is not walking and he's mad, he's in trouble. It's not just trouble, but big trouble. Am I correct? Okay, no wonder they keep saying women are beautiful. And uh, because, look at now. For just, is this place handsome or beautiful? Uh -huh. Why not not use this beautiful... When you want to describe a beautiful scenario, you go say beautiful. Why not say handsome? <laughs> it's your Ibu Joro or Joro. I, I get it. <laughs> because man is laboring and laboring with handsome. So, and then we are the one providing for the women. And so they are becoming more beautiful while we are becoming. <laughs> yes, read verse 16 quickly. All right. <laughs> well done, sir. You saw who you created me to be before I became me. Before I'd even seen the light of day. The number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. Wow. Mm -hmm. He recorded that for us. Mm -hmm. So what is number one? You and the Holy Spirit. What's number one? He created, created. you. Number two. He owns, he owns you. Number three, he intercedes for you. Then number four, he feeds you. He gives you fruit to eat. Galatians chapter five. Mm. Everybody stand. Galatians chapter five. We're going to pray together. I will continue next week by the grace of God. But the fruit of the spirit is what? This spirit, this spirit that fills you, that created you, has a fruit. A fruit is just one. But the components of that fruit are how many? Nine of them. The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against all there is what? No law. Let's go over it again. That is the fruit. Once it's, if you are having difficulty loving... Engage the spirits. If you're having difficulty sleeping, engage the spirit. If peace is very scarce around you, engage the spirit. Let's go over it again. But the fruit of the spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no word. Okay, let's try it. Take it off. Let's try it. What is that fruit that is in you? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Ooh, fantastic. Fantastic. So we're going to do it one more time. Just learn it. 
we are going to pray that the nine components, that fruit, rest with you. Those excessive anger, we bow. I'm telling you. Because the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God is the Spirit of love. is the Spirit of joy. is the Spirit of peace, long-suffering. They will bow. He takes hold of you. No wonder Jesus said to them, don't go anywhere until what? You are endued with the power. With the power. If you have difficulty forgiving, engage the Spirit of God. Okay, what are they? Number one, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Okay, the men alone. The men alone. Number one, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Oh, man. Nine over nine. I like your style. Nine over nine. But if, if women say it correct now, they will say uh, ten over nine. Ten, ten over nine. Thank God for our women. Oh. Women, you are beautiful. Men, you are handsome. Get something in your hand, though. Amen and amen. Are you ready to pray? Join hand with somebody. Join hand with somebody. My men, take the microphone. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Get to pray in the spirit. It is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. You will have it. 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 You will see yourself. You will see yourself more composed. You will see yourself more articulate because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you are, join your hand with somebody. Come on. Let's pray in the Spirit right now. Makondore are inviting the presence of the Spirit of God. Pray in the Spirit. Le 